I'm constantly crafting an image of who I am or how I look like. And uh, one thing that I think is super important to understand in the Enneagram world is that fours are not more authentic than threes are. And, no. Um, yeah. And they they feel they're authentic to themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, like we want to be, like I want to be so much me and so specific. But then the image ends up being so narrow and so crafted that it's not exactly. real. And and so sometimes Enneagram teachers talk about authenticity for four, but the authenticity becomes a distortion and becomes like a very specific and narrow image that is as fake as what trees present. The big hormone Enneagram. Hi, it's John here. I'm a sexual self-prize for the five, four, five, eight, try five. Hi, David here. I'm a self-prize sexual nine with a one, nine, seven, four, try type. Hey, it's Emika. I'm an eight wing seven sexual type with the eight, five, four, try type. Hey, it's Nancy. I'm a self-prize social three, wing four, and three, six, nine, try type. Okay. Nancy's back from the grave. <laughs> Resurrection Nancy. <laughs> we thought the corona took her, but no. please bestow us with some words from the other side. I think I would rather the corona take me. Mm. <laughs> I have come back from the other side just for this singular episode. We have a uh, special guest, Prince Joseph Simone and Princess Alaria Kantori Lukovic. If you didn't know, Alaria is. John's very lucky wife. Excuse me? <laughs> <That's for debate. laughs> He's lucky, maybe. Oh! Did we He's already... lucky, not me. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, Joseph is the one who started Enneagram Universe, the founder and that we uh, admin the group with. Yeah, y'all introduce yourself. I'm Ilaria, and I'm a sexual self press four with three wing, four, six, one. I am Joseph, the same tri type, 461 and 4 wing 3, but I am social sexual. Today we are coming to you from the uh, quarantine zone of the COVID cave. This is uh, <laughs> recorded on March 31st. So we've all been uh, holed up for a while and it's not quite, uh, it's dark town, but it's not as dark town as it's going to get. One of the main things that we've been looking at in our several of our episodes are. Um, The way in which there's kind of a a reflex to frame things in a positive or uplifting way in a lot of Enneagram and a lot of self-help and a lot of developmental kinds of modalities. Not to say there's anything wrong with that, but that, that there's other perspectives to bring in and other ways to looking at what is the authentic state of the psyche? What is it other than just something to improve and invest in and to grow into the sunlight. Um, David's talked a lot about this in ter- metaphorically in terms of where the types are on the Enneagram symbol and how, in a sense, the, uh, and David, you can correct me where I'm wrong or jump in, but that there's the nine at the top of the Enneagram represents being. It's the wholeness and the, the unity of all things. And it's almost like the sun. And um, at three and six, you've got sort of the ground, the terrain, the the earth, and um, three and six in particular are particularly functional types, and they're they're both, um, you know, the three is about my own individual story, my own individual journey, progress, success, and six is really about how things are going in a kind of a a collective or a holistic sense and in, 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 you know what what are the facets of a system that keep the system working and then you go to four and five and in the enneagram field there's often um, a way that four and five are misunderstood as types because there's a kind of a, a subtle sort of moralizing about what types four and five represent in the sense that they're under the earth under the line between six and three and um, there's a sort of a, a subversive or esoteric quality to them. And there is a way in which those types have very little superego around needing to be positive or acceptable or to be on the same page as other types or, you know, same page as other people. 
in that that's not just something that's unhealthy about those types as a lot of people often think or project. That's just a that's just the way they are, and it's part of their, in a sense, their contribution to a larger system that the whole Enneagram represents. Oh, Real quick, ahead. I want to mention something that we've been talking about attachment types because if anyone who's been following the Enneagram is familiar that a lot of attention is put on types four and five, specifically four. And so there's a lot of misinformation out there and mistyping around four, but we wanted to take the time to focus on attachment types because they don't get very much love and they get a lot of flack and hate in the Enneagram world. And there's a lot of misunderstanding around attachment types. Uh, but now that we have, we finally made our way to type four. You know, I've known the Enneagram since I was in high school, and uh, I know a lot of teachers and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, throughout the Enneagram field, especially in North America, but even in Europe, and then like Australia, sort of the European outgrowth countries or whatever, uh, a lot of people mistype as four. And, you know, there's a lot of recent books that, uh, like, I think The Road Back to You, for example, uh, describes their, their description of four is extremely nine-ish. And so there's a lot of ways that, that four and five, but I think four more than five, gets described, taught about, understood in a way that um, tends to reduce a lot of the nuance, reduces a lot of the, I don't want to say gift because that's, again, too positive a word, but in sense of what these types represent in the, in the whole scheme of how they're sort of, um, their, in a sense, negative energy is, is its own valuable asset. I, I might have the least Enneagram experience in this group. Like I, I only started a few years ago. And so it hasn't even been that long that I was typing at four. But let's just put it this way. Tons of people mistype as four. I am one and I mistyped as a seven um, when I first started because there wasn't a single description. Not that we should get caught up in descriptions, but when you're starting, you don't really have anything else. Um, there wasn't a single one that made any sense to me. I could sense that there was something in there. I think most of the four descriptions to me sound like nine with four. Like it's like sort of this mixture of nine and four. Um, so I was like, okay, there's something in there. But I went to seven because what was missing was the frustration of four, the brattiness of it, the negativity. It's not just simply negativity to me because I know a lot of nines and especially nines with four fix where they end up being sort of listless ghost lumps uh, when they're <laughs> depressed or sad, um, which is very different than the sort of like active frustration. Frustration is really the best word that I can think of because we have to take into account that it's part of that triad. Um, so it's frustration and reactivity uh, mixed together. And, and that I think was missing for me. So what about frustration resonated or what did you feel needed to be understood about frustration and four? I feel, and this may be my stacking, my secondary, whatever, but I guess just from a personal standpoint, I feel like a lot of motion and output in myself. I don't feel the sort of like, why bother things suck? Like it's, I don't feel the, even the idea of depression, the idea of, of just kind of being motionless and not wanting to do anything, not having any motion, motivation, that kind of thing is, I have never felt that in my life. It's always, what can I do? Uh, I mean, there's a three wing thing there too, but it's like, it's um, constant churning of things, not a lifelessness and a sadness. It's not sadness. It's not really even the word melancholy bothered me. I know that's like the traditional word, but melancholy to me sounds like, you know, looking out of like a rainy window and listening to sad music and like staring at the floor with like hair in front of one eye. But it's like, I'm kind of more out there, even if I'm inside. Yeah. So, you know, I have a five wing and uh, I'm a pretty lazy piece of shit, but I'm always churning. I like your term churning, because I think that's one of the, the, the distinctions between nine and four uh, that in the withdrawnness gets lost is that like nines need a lot of that kind of just pure mellow time, even if it's sad mm -hmm. mellow time, there's that listless quality and, and overwhelmed. They feel overwhelmed and helpless a lot, which I don't really relate to at all. I, I Yeah, I think get overwhelmed with my five wing, but it's still, it's right. like this kind of quality. But yeah, I think that's like, there's always an activity, even though like, as David says, fours are very useless. And I, I mm -hmm. feel like I excel at uselessness. 
I think one of the main distinctions um, between force and other types is that uh, the frustration is coupled with reactivity and a a sense of restlessness. And so there is Mm -hmm. a creative actor doing something (laughs) about it instead of just indulging into the sadness or whatever negative emotion is there. Yes. And the the emotional realness or reactivity um, and the frustration together create a very specific uh, combination. It's like uh, in the heart center, like frustration, reactivity, but like on heart stuff. So there's a constant motion in that area rather than uh, a stasis. And what we're getting at too is just that there's most nines have a quality that is a kind of sadness, right? So mm-hmm. we're contrasting the tone and the and the qualities of it to differentiate it because a lot of nines mistype is four just based on that you know words like sadness melancholy etc how does that show up sensitivity as a nine in contrast to fours for you david well sort of as joseph was alluding to it's it's much more of a it's not revved up by that frustration reactivity kind of it's not electrical i mean what you're describing there there's a lot of electricity there right whereas Mm -hmm. nine it's it's like an inertia like you you know just a a cart that just stopped rolling right there's no engine and it just stopped Mm. you know it's that kind of feeling i mean not that i don't haven't had you know acute you know phases of acute depression and even suicidal ideation and, and so forth but it's um it's sort of a th- i don't know if this if it's too abstract to talk about it this way but it's you know it's kind of thicker and heavier it doesn't it doesn't have that kind of um just again electricity to it voltage i'm sorry david but nines don't have interesting depressive experience <laughs> <laughs> never have and Nancy, you relate to, um, I don't know if you've said that you had struggled with some form of anxiety and depression when you were typing at four. Is that part of the reason why you saw yourself in four? Yeah, I actually wanted to bring that up because I wanted to ask. So I'm still learning four because I was originally taught it in a very nine uh, way, I guess, flavor with a very nine flavor to it. So when, and I remember someone even saying that fours will often feel depression more often than maybe other types will. And so that was part of it because I have struggled with depression and anxiety my whole life. So it can kind of flavor like what a three looks like, like a three characteristically doesn't really look depressed, but I was just wondering if fours relate to depression in the classic sense of depression. I don't. I mean, that was what kind of pulled me away from it personally. I I don't, I definitely have negative emotions, but they're like, they're they're electric. They're not, I don't know how to sit still or relax Mm -hmm. or just be cool with whatever or stop. It's like this consistent rejection and every rejection you make on everything that it comes at you everything anybody says the way they twitch their eyebrow their voice something they're wearing everything comes at you and you have to you just reject it right off the bat and then have to figure out what to do with that information and mm-hmm. it's so it's like constant stuff's just constantly moving it's not the sort of like it's reactionary yeah, I, don't, I don't know it's reactionary i don't yeah i don't personally i don't relate to depression yeah i think uh, I, I do relate to depression. I mean, I think I'm depressed right now for less, like even before this whole COVID bullshit, like I, it's been a lifelong thing, but it's been particularly heavy last couple of months. And I think it's because I finished writing my book and I don't have any creative pressing thing. Like I'm learning how to be a person that's not writing a book anymore. Um, but it's been pretty tough, but it's it's it, it does feel heavy, but it doesn't feel as lethargic or like a big heavy sigh like a lot of the nines seem to describe their depression. Mm-hmm. If there's an underlying like churning hatred, disgust feeling in mm-hmm. the world and my experience. And, you know, when I was younger, uh, a big formative experience in my life was like I was severely depressed to a point where I think it was, I was like bordering on some kinds of mental illness and having kind of weird hallucination thoughts. And I was obsessed with birth defects and like, especially like Harlequin 
baby, like baby, Harlequin babyism or whatever you call it, Harlequinism for babies, whatever. Don't look it up, but it's a horrible, oh my God, brutal, it's horrible. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, horrific. You can't believe it's real and you can understand why ancient cultures might have thought demons might just be born out of, you know, because uh, it's, it's this like this horrible birth defect. And it was, I was obsessed with it as the, like, as the symbol. And it's very symbolic. Like all my, I don't know if this is true with nines or just some nines like David that are symbolic, but like everything is, is symbolic. So this birth defect was the symbol of the like vindictive absence of like a divine force that had, that had vindictively removed itself from matter. And that we were just like condemned to like team and in the frothing oozing disgusting you know decaying matter or whatever i think four wing threes can do it's like a less conceptual less symbolic disgust but i think moving into that maybe we could talk about like the disgust and hatred thing um because it's something that people really don't understand when which is i guess is partially that maybe we have because you know we'll say stuff like fours are hateful and they're like freaking out because maybe they think we mean like i don't know murder or racism yeah exactly it's like no it's i'm talking about like i hate you heard it here fours are racist (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) you know it's um it feels like it's an important part of who i am and it doesn't feel like like negativity isn't something that's negative i don't know how to explain that but it just feels like it's my natural state of being to be it's such a constant rejection hatred and disgust of every single thing and trying to figure out what to do with that. And that feels normal and it's fine. So uh, I had the pleasure of meeting Joseph a couple <laughs> months ago. And Laria and Joseph had been talking or whatever online and Joseph visited New York. Uh, they had a four with a three wing day together. And mm-hmm. when I found them, they were in a very like <laughs> atmospheric... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> fancy is not the right word. It's not like fancy. It's like uh, royal. Very, yeah, very royal. Like every, dark, darkly lit, and there was like red this. Velvet. Unique, yes, red velvet and dark vampire colors, <laughs> and fancy, expensive food and nice wine. And there was this like weird, uh, very elaborate kind of baroque fireplace nearby, mm. and. They were in their own little corner and there was pillows around in this restaurant. And- <laughs> it was so good. And so Arist- aristocrats. There was there was an aristocratic feel, which if for listeners, uh, you know, Don Riso and Russ Hudson call the four with the three wing the aristocrat. And That's it was a, good a- name. I th- it's a no. great fucking name. I'm married no. to yeah. an aristocrat. And uh, <laughs> I wanted to know if, if Laura and Joseph, y'all could speak to um, the, the, the prince princess thing. Uh, I mean, John and I are very different in that respect. And I think it is partially the three wing versus the five wing. Uh, but for me, and I think that ties with the frustration and the negative feelings is that um life and people are usually ugly and kind of mundane and boring and i'm always looking for something that is more than or um, has the aristocratic feeling to it but i don't feel like i've ever i mean when i was a kid my mom my mom is a six and um, a self-press six and she likes to dress like a man and she always told me how i was obsessed with velvet dresses and I would ask to only wear velvet dresses and I wouldn't want to go to the park because I didn't want to wear jeans and I would refuse to go to the park to play with my friends. I'm also social blind so I guess I didn't care that much but my mom would get upset because um, I just wanted to be in my dress and and to me it's a very just simple aesthetic sense of uh sensation thing about the way i feel or the way things are okay yeah it's sort of i guess it's i I know what you're saying and it's kind of a hard thing to describe to um what about that look that vibe it just speaks volumes to me like just feels um it's like a combination of it was like walking into an ann rice novel but a little fancier (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah the thing when you're a type that rejects every single piece of input you don't feel like you're supposed to be part of 
whatever's happening in, in front of you at any time. But I guess with the three wing and also I'm social and have a couple of really kind of human uh, fixes in my tri-type, it's like I'm actually pretty extroverted and I want to be out there. But it's also really important that there is something that is visibly separate about me and mixes with like it's like I can't remember just being ex- I think exemption is what I was going to say just like I'm not part of that so um but there's a sense of superiority in it like I'm not part of that and so if you're not part of that but you also have better taste and are like royal and being pampered and look really good three wing it's like who are you you're a prince <laughs> <laughs> So we speak a lot about like this sort of frustration quality and part of what that is in the four psyche is that there's a sense like so force one and seven are frustration types and you know seven is frustrated with the mothering figure and so there's a sense that this the the seven has this I'm going to go out and get the nurturing I didn't get so I'm going to try a lot of things. For the one, it's frustration with the with the fathering figure not the literal father but whoever you know the structure making figure so I didn't get the structure I need. I'm going to make the right or objective structure. And for mm-hmm. four, it's frustration with both figures. You know, this is early in life, like infancy. And it's a sense that uh, I didn't get mirroring from the nurturing figure. I wasn't seen for who I was. And so I need to see myself. And mm-hmm. I wasn't taught how to function. So I don't quite know how to really function. The, the, the protecting or functioning figure didn't show me that. Right. So there's this sense of, uh, being completely alienated from, you know, the normal world. And uh, there's a way that as a four, it's like, okay, I wasn't seen for who I am. I need to see myself. And the way I do that, or the way I think to do that, is to push away from the surface of things or to push away from what's common and to separate myself, to go inside. And so, you know, in a, when, when a four is more healthy, it's like this just sort of a natural process of being deeply in touch with myself. But as it gets more chronic, um, you know, it's 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 separating myself with um, like a kind of uh, a certain kind of emotional violence. It's like I mm-hmm. uh, fuck everything else, and and as a five winger, at least from speaking for myself, it's like the surface of things is ugly. It's artificial. It's rotting. It's it's horrifying. It's macabre and broken and it's like a husk and so i'm 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 pushing away from the surface of things and part of the the mechanism of four then is that we're we are sort of like our neighbors the five that has that intense mental concentration of focus fours have an intense inner focus on their inner life their the, not just feelings but the whole range of inner impressions and it's like anything that interrupts my concentration on in, my my inner life uh, is resisted and feels like a distraction. Anything that mm-hmm. seems to uh, reflect my inner life on the outside, like something that is in common uh, with it, it seems like it's not mine. Like if, if if I find it somewhere else, it's not really mine. So I got to keep looking for what's me. And so right, right. myopic focus uh, and more and more sort of painting oneself into a corner and separating oneself through hatred, through disdain, through dislike, but also just making distinctions and it doesn't have to be so quote unquote negative, but uh, it's always separating. And I see myself as fundamentally different, fundamentally apart from and separate from what's going on around me. And so four with five and four with three seem, have seemingly different uh, ways of doing this. And, you know, I really appreciate the way you're speaking to it, Joseph. And, and you know, you don't have to right now, Laria, but, you know, you've uh, you've observed me in, in captivity for a, quite a while. So I'm sure you have also a lot to speak on and the differences between the how the wings influence that. Yeah, uh, but if I can say something about what you just said, for me, honestly, I don't, I don't need to relate or being similar to other people or function the same right. way people function. I don't care about that. I want to be me, and I think many times when people try to relate to me, it feels like it feels That's wrong. And it feels yeah, it feels like. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, there's nothing then, worse than that. Yeah, <laughs> agreed. <laughs> we don't want to be. I mean, you said it once, Larry. I think that you were like, I don't, or like, I want to confuse people, or I want to surprise people, or something like that. It was just like the second that someone's onto you, you feel disgusting. In yeah, and, I, I don't want to be seen. Yeah. Like, I yeah. think, I think yeah. people even want to exactly. Yeah, there's got to be a you want to be seen. 
Right. But I, for me, I, there's, again, maybe my social, but I, I still want people to, you want people to look, I want the, like, I'm not social blind. I really <laughs> am out there a lot. Like I really have a lot, like I'm very extroverted, but I don't want to be too understood. You want people to either really want to understand you or, but not be able to, or to be repulsed by you or those very select few people that maybe actually do understand you and that you think are like you that you're like oh that person's me too like you can integrate that into whatever your identity is right but most of the time for when people relate i I think they're just not getting it absolutely yeah yeah so that brings up a question for me to the fours is you know to the degree that the descriptions and they may be just inaccurate but they're talking about fours actually want to find some alignment or connection mm-hmm. with another person what is that you know what i'm saying right we've we've highlighted the that extreme continual differentiation so but what's the part that actually does want to find some resonance mm-hmm. with somebody somewhere i feel like i want it a lot like it's a constant search that's very dissatisfied all the time like it's it is something that I want. Um, I don't, I, how do I explain this? I think I consciously want that, but unconsciously sabotage and don't want it, right? Because the type is unconscious. The conscious thing is like, yeah, of course I want friends. I want people. I want, again, this is me being very social and very extroverted for a four. Um, but I do like really want those things. But that search, like that looking for people who I connect with is usually fruitless. I mean, I don't even like any of y'all. That's fair. We noticed. I would say that uh, as a four, there's, I I kind of want, like a lot of times when people relate to try to create connection, they do it through commonality, right? They're like, oh, you are Canadian. My grandma's Canadian, you know? And it's like, oh, cool. Yeah. And it's, and it's like, it becomes this sort of like a ping ponging of different signifiers. And when I feel really close with somebody. There's a, a mixture of like, I'm really seen, but I'm really seen in my own mystery. And I'm really seeing the person as their own mystery. Like everybody underneath the surface of things is really like, um, it's kind of cheesy, but is it in, not just an enigma, but also like there's something essentially mysterious. And uh, it's like an intimacy that's like respectful of and seeing and not flinching in the face of a certain separateness. So it's not yes. a, t- a connection that's not necessarily based on commonality. You're actually wanting separate people that you're are like that encountering have different- something right. and, and, and not trying to make the thing that you're encountering yourself. You know, a lot of it's like, I, at least yeah. speaking for as myself, as if I, I feel like I can feel when somebody is trying to familiarize me and therefore locate me as a way mm. to, you know, it's uh-huh. still about them. And yep. whereas like mm. they're sort of present to what I am and I'm present to what they are, we can reveal what we are on our own terms and it becomes this kind of uh, unfolding that's really beautiful. So it's, it sounds like-, like, it sounds like fours are looking for connection with other distinct individuals. It's not like you're looking for sameness. Right. You're not looking for, oh, me too. It, you're more looking for someone who's their own person in a way. Yeah. Yeah. I often connect to people through dissonance as well. Like I don't need to have common things with somebody to feel close to them. Say more. Um, I mean, I've never, I've never like looked for sameness in my life or commonality to feel close to somebody and and to me the clash and the tension between people and the difference between people and the distinctions and uh discovering somebody for who they are and how different they are from me is as interesting if not more to meeting somebody that is more similar to me that's huge right there because all of these groups online of quote unquote fours they're all doing me too i'm just like that and we're all the same and all that stuff that fours secretly wish that they could get acceptance from other people yes and uh, but one thing i wanted to bring up because it's it's one thing to look at the description of a type on paper and it's describing an unconscious process 
and we've talked about this before that other types like you know we had on Farah a couple of weeks ago uh where she was talking about having this conscious sense of wanting to be unique and that with four is that this is an unconscious process of separation so even though you guys are talking right. about wanting to have connections and wanting to be out there that there is a continuous process of rejecting so I was curious about what your initial reaction to type four was like in terms of what the description said and if you could identify it in yourself or was it like a process of recognizing that this was something that you were doing without realizing it? You know what? I think I can remember again. So I'm going to be one of the most like socially forced, but um, I did not understand when I was a teenager or when I was younger, when people would tell me that I was being a bad sport or uh rude or negative and people said it to me all the time my mom is a nine my dad's a seven um so it was just like why are you being so negative why are you you know you're being so rude like you know you're just all you care about is what you want you're being selfish that was their way of saying that like i was only you know thinking about myself and to me it didn't like it was always a surprise when people would be like, you know, you're sorry, go on dates. You're so negative. Like, why are you complaining? You said you hated summer. And I was like, it's hot. Like, I don't know. I, I hate you know, summer too. Solidarity. Well, summer's garbage. So much in common. No, summer, summer is, summer is people who are like stupid, like taking off their clothes and like going to the beach and, and just like dancing to like shitty music. And it's like, no, no. Anyway, but yeah, it was unconscious for me, totally, totally unconscious. Now it's not because I studied it, um, but I didn't understand. It wasn't until people would say stuff to me, like in high school later when I had the image of being somebody who was kind of bitchy or whatever. And I was like, oh, okay. I just didn't know. It was just the way that I was reacting to everything. I'm very irritable. I'm very disdainful. I'm very sort of hateful in a petty way um and reactive and rude and i and i have and this is the one fix there but i have extremely high standards for anything aesthetic to the point where like my parents would be like i bet if we did a taste test of these two granola bars that you wouldn't know which one the most expensive one was and i was like try me i won <laughs> they tested me multiple times because i was like i don't want these fucking granola bars whatever but they always test you know always one so and it, i didn't understand i was like how do you not taste that we're talking about granola bars so i was like 11 but i was still like i don't understand why you would put trash in your mouth and why you can't tell the difference between a good granola bar and a bad one um so that's just all that stuff is not stuff that i was even conscious of until i was older and I realized what, how other people saw me and I had to integrate that into like my own self-concept. Yeah, that makes sense. What about, what about you, Laurie? Laurie? Uh, no, I mean, I learned the Enneagram when I was 17 and mm -hmm. uh, it was pretty clear even through bad descriptions that I was a four, uh, but mostly by differentiation as well because, um, I mean, the, the trap, uh, but also the good thing about four is that they feel so different from everyone else, even though now a lot of types also feel different from everyone else. But um, so yeah. when you don't relate to other people, then like to me, it was like, oh, maybe I'm not like other fours because I'm just me. Um, and oh yeah, so, I thought that too, yeah. Right, and I mean, there were a lot of people that now looking backward, uh, they're probably not four, uh, they're not fours. And they thought they were four and I was like, oh, I don't relate to any of these people. I was like, oh, but that's, basically what the four is so maybe i don't relate because they all suck and that's all <laughs> <laughs> but, they but, do. yeah they do um you guys have been mentioning like stuff about image and one thing that i, I really i'm curious about is your your experience of i mean we have four image types on this call and oh yeah <laughs> yeah so awesome. just like the different ways of uh, you guys uh, seeking mirroring. I'm, I'm sure the four is looking within, and also like the difference between the way four wing three does it and four wing five does it. So I'd like to hear you guys talk about. I know Joseph, you mentioned about. You know, I heard people tell me over and over again that I'm mm -hmm. this bitchy person, and I mm -hmm. had to find, I had to figure out a way how to integrate that yeah. into my self concept. That's yeah. really fucking weird to me as a body type. 
you know yeah. what the fuck does yeah. that mean um and so like can you guys say something say a little bit about your process of integrating or crafting a self image <clears throat> i feel like everything um every single thing that anyone does is a look everything that i do is I, you know not even just crafted. physically a look but it's yeah it's a crafted it's a photograph it's a picture it's an image it's a still shot i think this is why um so, so sometimes the thing with three will bother me because it's like the most kind of um marketplace way of doing image it's like take the photograph airbrush it make it perfect whereas i'm like ugh, like i want my photograph to be the one that everybody looks at and they're like i've never seen that one before or you know that kind of thing so but it's everything is a photograph um every time anything i i use the analogy all the time that like when i first got into the enneagram and i was thinking about image and i was in a bookstore and i was in an aisle looking for an enneagram book but the title of the aisle said self help and somebody looked at me and i was like i'm not self help i don't read self help books and i like <laughs> had to go to another area of the store I couldn't be seen in self-help because I, I, and I literally wanted to like clarify, this is the other thing with the four hyper-specificity. I wanted to be like, by the way, I don't like self-help books, but like there's a specific thing that I'm interested in, not the health self-help. Like I had to kind of clarify like, okay, you're looking at this picture of me, but like, you know, I wanted my hair to be slightly different. Like it's that kind of like chiseling around exactly what I'm supposed to look like to other people. And with social, and I'm sure with secondary six, it's like worse where it feels like all of what I am is somehow based on how other people see me and a rejection of it and an acceptance of some of those things. That makes sense. Um, and so if you really think about it, you feel like you're being authentic, but if you really, really go deep, you feel kind of lost because you're like, you know, why did I say I didn't like that thing just because other people, I mean, that's a really kind of like mundane example, but it's just, a, it's a constant rejection based on how other people see you. Or if they see some, if you actually feel seen, like somebody said I was bitchy and I'm just like, well, they seem to like that. And I think it's true. And you know, actually I like that. I'm going to take that. Okay. I'm bitchy, you know? Hmm. Yeah. Um, well, I, I realized later in life, uh, years after getting to know about the Enneagram that I'm constantly crafting an image of who I am or how I look like. And uh, one thing that I think is super important to understand in the Enneagram world is that fours are not more authentic than threes are. And, no. Um, yeah. And they, they feel they're authentic to themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, like we want to be, like I want to be so much me and so specific but then the image ends up being so narrow and so crafted that it's not exactly. real. And, and so sometimes Enneagram teachers talk about authenticity for four, but the authenticity becomes a distortion and becomes like a very specific and narrow image that is as fake as what trees present. Yeah. Can you say more about both of you crafting an image um just to be more clear about what that is 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 that what your tastes are the things that are around you so to speak and what that's saying about you as an image yeah and there is also about a lot about not like not being something like this is not me and this this is not me and so it, the image becomes very um distorted and based on negativism mm -hmm. it's based on right exactly it's based on not me Whereas I feel like yeah. the image, so my, my, okay, my best friend is a three and her image, she's an extremely unique person, um, but her image is based on value. Like I need to do this well, or I need to work hard, or if I'm like a pole dancing slut, then I need to be the best slut ever and whatever it is, um, be anything. But for mm -hmm. me, it's like, um, it's more based on like, it's like, like you're standing in a room with a bunch of stuff and none of it you can use. So you're trying to find something that you can use by looking deep, deep inside to find the thing that is you because nothing around you is you. Like it's like standing in a rainbow, all the colors are around you, but you're trying to find a color that you are. And you're like, oh, maybe it's like that weird burnt orange color. Like, I don't see that. You know what I mean? Um, so it's, it's like an image based on the rejection of everything else. Nancy, what is what is your orientation? I guess what are you looking for in terms of how you try to figure out your self image? Um, like, is it more of a rejection, like, or is it more of like um, you're looking? I guess threes are looking for value, um, 
what are you looking at to determine what's valuable? So I think a big part of what I shape my image off of is people who I view as having value, what do they view as having value? Oh, okay. And then I shape it after that. So if it's a, you know, if I view this powerful female as having value, okay, what does she view as having value? Okay, cool. Short, hot pink hair. Awesome. Done. Like that kind of thing. Right. So it's like modeling. You're kind it of, is, yeah. 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 So I'm, I'm kind of envious of the four because I feel like I'm constantly like I will become this thing that someone else views as, as um, ideal, but then it's not me, and I'll just be like, oh shit, this isn't me. Like a year later mm. after modeling it. So hearing you guys talk about constantly wanting to be, you know, rejecting other things, I'm like, wow, that'd be nice if I could just see other things and be like, nope. <laughs> instead of just seeing other things but and you reject morphing you into like. it <laughs> you know we, we i think i still morph it's just that i'm it's like with threes it's a fast track to that morph like mm-hmm. it's like okay short pink hair got it <laughs> i can do that you know what i mean i can i can and then with me it's just like wait but and then it's you know you're you're constantly reprocessing what that thing is supposed to be and then you know you think you like being short with pink hair but then you like walk outside and there's somebody with short pink hair and you're like oh my god uh you know (laughs) that what then what the hell am i what am i supposed to be and then you're trying to and then you start but and then you're you're angry about it it's a frustration like i hate her i hate people who are short pink hair why does everybody who pink hair have to be short and blah 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 and you're freaking out and then you're like i guess that i'm not that thing and i'm something else and um yeah so it's still it's still not authentic like alaria said Mm. Well, so I'm I'm curious, John. Like, what is listening to them? Do you do you feel like oh, what's your take on like what's the the four wing four wing five image style? How is it different? If well, I'm like if I see pink hair, then I'm like it's not pink hair. <laughs> <laughs> no I'm kidding. Um, that sums it up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, <laughs> close. So, uh, End of call. <laughs> you know, it, it's very interesting, like hearing the four with three. I mean. Like the three thing and the four with three thing uh, still feels very alien in its own way. Like the thing for me as a, you know, with the five wing and all that is, is that there's this, and I think I described it in one of the making nine great again episodes, but there's a sense of like that there is an essential self or a platonic ideal of, of what I am. That's not something I feel like I crafted. It's like a feeling of myself but that my external actions and the way that I show up in my body and my behaviors and what I do, what I wear, how I am, what I do in life, what I pursue can be more or less in sync with that platonic ideal. And so there's this sense that the, the world, the material world, the day-to-day world, the mundane is like tearing away at the integrity of my yeah to that (laughs) inner inner sense and it's something that it's like this inner sense this inner self this essential self whatever cannot actually be and participate in the world and so there's this complete chasm and discrepancy between my body between what i am in the in you know as other people see me as other people experience me and this sense of what I am. And so like as I've gotten older that was that when I was younger that haunted me and it just felt this profound schizoid kind of alienation and um hatred and tumultuous like as as david was speaking to it's not like a heavy depression it's like a this uh it's like a inner violent depression and as i've gotten older like you know and as a sexual type knowing that like girls are not going to talk to me if I don't look like I have a nice body. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> instinct has made me get into my body and, <laughs> and to be functional <laughs> to some extent because uh, women are not going to be attracted to a guy that doesn't have his shit together in some way. So it's like, you know, a lot of my, like my job career art so far, like, you know, is mostly around inner work and stuff. And I'm somehow surviving on the money uh, that I'm making in those things, but it's like, oh, I lead tours through Egypt, and that's congruent with a certain inner sense of myself, or my artwork is congruent with this inner sense, or you know, Enneagram and inner inner work is can 
congruent with this inner life that I feel is like the real me and that this flesh vehicle is just sort of uh, <laughs> this meat puppet getting me through. And, and you I'm know, just it's laughing like, at Alaria's laughing in the back. <laughs> I can hear her laughing. You're her married to a background. meat puppet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't laughing. Was, was that laughing? was Nancy. That was me. Oh, sorry. Okay, never mind. <laughs> so. she's, she's heard that a hundred times, I'm sure. Yeah, it's, it's gotten just, old. Yeah, it's just old, this corpse that I'm like. <laughs> she's exist- like, you are a fucking meat puppet. <laughs> I'm just ex- I'm still in the corner, like existentially brooding over my my corpse, my animated corpse. And I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> i think when you add the three wing there's a sense of um with all everything that was like just great language to describe what it feels like but there's um with the three wing it's like there's still a sense of like motion like something has to be done this there has to be value in this you know like so i guess i'll just you know be a prince <laughs> like no one has to talk That's to me valuable. I'm, I'm gonna be elevated yeah like i have value but like i'm totally useless you know what i mean i'm not the king the king has work to do <laughs> <laughs> what about the friendship pastor i was thinking what uh joseph was sharing is a little bit more social about comparing with other people and then saying oh that's not me um and i don't think i do that as much but um but i think there is a way that I'm kind of a mix of both of you and and also not um, because I feel I'm always trying to find what's me and trying to craft, like I'm kind of the crafter and the craft and the artist and the piece of art. And mm-hmm. so I'm doing both and I think it's part of the four and three. Um, and then eventually I think there is a part of me that knows I need to be sold in a way like right. sexually or as a career or as vocation or whatever to be functionally. Yeah, it's also a marketplace. And I think the three wing reminds me of that, but it, there is no way that works out for me. I mean, it, it never works out. Like you're uh, doomed. Well enough, exactly, yes. Yeah. And and also like in trying to find what's me, you know, I, I do breastwork and breastwork is a discipline that is not even... Uh, spread out that much um and i'm trying to create my own way of doing breast work that is different from how people do it because i think it's not adequate the people the way people are doing it and uh i don't know if it's ever gonna be functional in the way people are functional but i don't really care i think i'm offering who i am and i think having energies that are dissonant and they're different in the world is useful even though it's useless people get the blessing from the princess <laughs> exactly the useless it's blessing right. mm-hmm. it, it's a it's a there's a there's a social thing with me too where it's just like combined with four you're just like there's the, the whole exaggerated like elitism thing like everybody's plebeian and if i'm not then i i should probably look royal or be royal or act royal and it just as an image i mean i think i should have been a princess but they made yeah. a mistake probably Amora, yeah. I, I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I, I, I want you to speak to some of uh, how, like, I don't feel like uh, people listening would get quite the sense of your princess quality. You can speak about that. <laughs> <laughs> how horrible is she? I mean, so. then I, I can be a fat later. <laughs> okay, good. After this call. <laughs> That's a cool. trap. <laughs> no, you can speak about that. <laughs> so, uh, one of the just uh, Aloria is uh, fascinating to me because uh, she has this natural sense of refined taste about things that, like, we might call like the good things in life. Like, like Aloria is Italian, and so you know, wine is a major part of her culture. But she can. We go to these like. I work for uh, Russ Hudson and he takes us to fancy restaurants, like very super fancy. And Alaria, without knowing what she's drinking, can discern the quality and like price of the wine. And mm-hmm. like she, she, she can, she could be a sommelier, I think, uh, like without, without much training. Like she just has a really sophisticated palate, but it always gravitates towards the like luxurious, the mm-hmm. extravagant, the refined, the, we know quality. what's better. Yeah, there's this, but it's like it's part of her nervous system. It's not even exactly. practical. 
And there's always a sense of refinement. And, you know, like when we have to dress up, like we go to a wedding or something, you know, she has this natural uh, poise and way she carries herself. that's very refined. And like, I'm a schlub, like I'm, <laughs> I'm falling apart and I feel like I'm like melting and like you wore you know, a leather jacket to our dinner yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> you ruined everything John. yeah and and calling it a fancy restaurant makes it sound basic yeah <laughs> yeah i tried to avoid fancy. that but my vocabulary <laughs> of, of uh yeah. refinement is lacking you did yeah. a lot of wrong stuff john <laughs> i know but uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there, there's this quality with four with threes where I feel like I'm always doing something wrong. Like I always, like, you are. Like, <laughs> my best, Thank you, Joseph. Best friend is uh, because you are. It's yeah, just, it's just there. My best friend is a soldier four with a three, and he's great. But I always, I'm like, I'm, I'm doing I something mean, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. mean, you are. John is not very. Ref- Find. And I think that's one of the differences between four with three and four with five. But I mean, there is something very approximative and not refined and not uh, sophisticated about you. <gasps> uh. <laughs> I mean, it's not an offense. <laughs> it's one of the four wing five is to me kind of more grungy. That um, and four wing three is royal. Yes, that's why Bohemian works. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I like yeah, what you sure. said. Like, I really love like the idea that it's like part of her nervous system because that that's exactly what I was trying to say that I have it's almost torture that I'm constantly but also feels like the most obvious and most important thing in the world that that one wouldn't notice that they were drinking a Riesling without being told or like you know (laughs) Laura when we first met you weren't sure about your wing right uh yeah but I mean I didn't know the Enneagram well and I think Italians didn't explain the five wing well and so what about, what clarified it for you? Uh, the way you are. I think, I mean, oh. you, have, <laughs> <laughs> you have a lot of five. And uh, I, I was good at school and I, I liked studying when I was younger. And um, I thought that because I liked it and I wasn't like going for good scores, um, I thought maybe like the depth of like wanting to study and mm-hmm. wanting to understand things was five-ish, um, but I suppose it's not. And I think I, I knowing John and he's a double withdrawn and uh, being a four with five and being a four with three, I'm double image type. Uh, a lot of things mm-hmm. came up pretty quickly and uh, pretty clearly about the differences between us. Um, I'm more dramatic, I'm louder. Uh, I care more about image um, or the way I come across, not from a social standpoint, but I care about refinement and sophistication and luxury. And um, I don't think he does. And he needs a lot of time for himself more than anyone I know. You need a lot of framing, right? Like compared to me, like when you say, like you're, you're concerned with how you frame things or put things out there in a different way. Yeah, but I think that that's also like the six and one in the tri type, mm-hmm. maybe. Mm-hmm. I'm more image conscious than you, and not just the way I look like, but in general about what I present uh, as me. Like, you don't give a fuck about the way people see you. That's one thing that I'll, I'll say that I noticed from watching you guys interact. Um, John and Ilaria are both social lasts, but uh, one thing that I do notice is that Ilaria is way more sensitive about what's put out there about her. You know, if you say something that she doesn't think matches the way she sees herself, she's going to correct it. And John is yeah. more chaotic about those kind of things. Just, you know, it's like very, un. it seems very unselfconscious about what people might be thinking of him. And so I know some people might be listening to this and say, oh, like there are a lot of people who think that they're fours, who generally think they're four wing fives for this reason, because I think a lot of people push away from the elitism, elitism mm-hmm. of four wing three. But at the same time, I do think that four wing fives have their own brand of elitism. And oh, yeah. I'm no, wondering, I'm wondering uh, if any of you guys can say something it's... about John's elitism from your well, point of view. Well, I would want to say that it's even worse in a way because oh. it's very silent. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, John, in a way, uh, distinguished the way he is in 
in a way that seems even more arrogant. Not that he is arrogant. Oh. But, <laughs> but there, is a, there is a confidence in the way he differentiates himself from other people. And he doesn't even care if they see it or not at all. But, and, yeah. and at the same time, like, he values what he does and the way he creates, the way he does art, the way he chooses what he chooses. Um, and it's not um, arguable. Like, that's the way he is. And you're John not going to change trouble. Sorry. Change him. Yeah, I was going to say, hey, it seems when I, like, he has trouble being universal. I mean, all fours have trouble being, like, universal. But if we're comparing, like, because it's always nine, so the typing is four wing five. John will talk and the person on the other end doesn't understand a thing. And I'm not sure that he cares sometimes uh it's just like <laughs> you better well, watch it, depends, it, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> no, no but he you know it depends if you're teaching and you want somebody to understand of course you I'm do but joking. there's this, this way that for is like if we lose people we kind of feel proud of ourselves like you know what i mean it's, it's... <laughs> no <laughs> do you know what i mean like no i don't like, that's not john at all that's from, not john from at years all. of listening to john talk i know what you mean <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah, we don't really want to be understood. Like, it's, it's a battle between, because there's an understanding that, like, if somebody gets you, it's great. But at the same time, it's just like, look, like, there's, I mean, it's a sounds like a cliche statement, but you're like, I'm too deep anyway. Like, no one's going to get it. Yeah, so. yeah. John, John doesn't care to appeal to other people unless it's for a sexual reason. Yeah, they don't appeal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he doesn't, appeal. he doesn't want to appeal to other people. He does because people are fascinated by him, but. It's never the motivation. I, I, over the years of hanging out with John or following his writings, I remember the first encounter, not like that we talked, but just seeing him on like the EIDB boards back in the day. And um, I just always felt that he would just go off the deep end. Back then, it was just like insane off the deep end. Like, who are you talking to? <laughs> Nobody <Yeah>. understands. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. About. Like, who the hell is is <laughs> the audience? Like, what? Who is? Are you? It, yeah. Like, who? Who are you speaking to? What is this? <laughs> Usually, I'm just my own audience, and so yeah, other yeah. people are a springboard for me to like actually articulate myself because. Yeah. Like, I mean, like people get mad at me online all the time and half of what I'm doing is I'm not really talking to anybody but myself. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. oh, that's a weird, weird thing they're saying. And so I respond, but I'm like doing it because it's making me give words to my like very chaotic yeah. and abstract impressions. When, you know, one, th one thing I'll add about like the, the feeling of a being alien, like, you know, Alaria will say things of like, I was not born for this time, you know, like in, in sort of. Uh, you know, and I don't know how serious or whatever, but it's just a joke she'll sometimes say. It's like, oh, I, I feel like I, you know, I was should have been a princess at this time. And and then in contrast, like, I feel like... Uh, I'm serious, by the way. No, I know, I know. <laughs> I'm just giving you room to voice to yourself. <laughs> Image then, management there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but then I feel, I feel like not even like an alien, but like I, like a different, like I'm on the wrong plane of reality, you know, like... The, the sense of alienation, I think, is very, uh, it's, it's very different. And then I'll also add one of the difference between 4, 3, and 4, 5 is like, uh, at least my experience with Laurie, and part of it might be her just being Italian, but um, the drama aspect, like, I have a certain kind of drama that I think would be called drama, but like, 4 with 3 will do that stuff of like, like, you are not loved, you know, like this kind of, <laughs> uh, yeah. it, I mean, it's really like operatic. It's like sometimes, and it's very like a, a real dagger underneath the heart. You know, it's like, not Aww. even your mother could love you. You know, this kind of thing. And it's like, Ooh. Oh, God, I no. love that. I fucking love that. <laughs> you dagger are just a off. sad, lost thing that no one will ever love. You know, this kind of like. <laughs> one way a lot of people differentiate threes from fours is how they deal with conflict. And I'd like to hear how you guys feel when you deal with conflict cool. it's like uh you need to like see where i'm at like my you know i think uh tara in a previous call called it our emotional location and it's like mm. for a four it's like putting it in your fucking face like this is my location fucking mm -hmm. see what i'm feeling meet me here and no yeah. no you're not seeing it now you have you know like this is how you need to see it you know this is how you need to see how i'm feeling uh and it's very like a 
uh, a very forceful way of uh, asserting one's emotional state and what needs mm-hmm. to be, what needs, to, what outcomes need to happen from because you've seen this. It's mm-hmm. like image with feeling. you it's not. Um, you don't even really want somebody to just like empathize, especially because an, almost anything anyone says will just sound like empty shit. Mm-hmm. A certain kind of being seen. Yeah, like, but being, it's like in, there's in a an articulated thing, way. In an articulated way, yeah. And there's a, there's a a sixth reactivity for me that kind of flows into it. But how do you know that you've been seen in the way that you want to be seen? Like, what are you? I never how happened. Do you know that <sighs> never happened. I I I don't. No, I don't think it's ever happened. Um, I think if somebody just acknowledges what I'm going through, then I almost, no, it's never happened. Even if somebody acknowledges what I'm going through, I'm like, ugh, they didn't really get it. But at least I feel happy that they tried. What about you, John and Alara? Do you, uh, what, what does it take for you to feel that someone has seen you or uh, your articulated emotional location that they get it? Uh, for me, if somebody's like desperately crying and saying sorry, <laughs> my knees pleading for the princess's yeah. forgiveness. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, me. I'm begging yeah. on the floor. You yes, need that. Their heads on the chopping block, please, please. Exactly. Flagellate they need to themselves. prostrate themselves. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's the only and give way. Give me but then a lot like, of massages. Oh, yeah, I don't know why I asked. I don't even know why I asked. I already knew the answer. Yeah. Yeah. So that, yeah, that's what it is because whatever you're feeling is so specific that, like, if a person thinks they understood it in two seconds, they didn't try, they didn't care. So it's like what you said somebody has to try really, really, really hard. And then you might have even forgotten by that point because you weren't even really that upset. You just like wanted to have the image of this specific thing that was happening. Floor threes, man. Yeah, isn't, so, isn't, some, sometimes John tells me that I say the same thing over and over again in five different ways, and I never get to oh, the point. Too. But I'm yes, trying to yeah. be accurate and make sure he understands exactly. what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 exactly. I always feel like, for myself at least, uh, it I, what I always come back to is this sort of paradox of like spaciousness and intimacy, like where I, they're not. It's not really a paradox. Like I think that for real intimacy there needs to be a certain spaciousness in the sense of a kind of a, a allowance for that that you know what i said earlier is mystery that kind of um something really like space for something really new and untouched and uh fresh and uh personal to really arise and so uh yeah it's not like it's not often that i actually feel seen but sometimes there's a certain way that i can abide in the in the almost scene with somebody else, you know, it's like I can abide in this sense that we're both impenetrable mysteries, but we can both be impenetrable mysteries together. Question for Nancy and David, uh, from the point of view of being not fours, uh, what is the, the space that you see that four holds in a kind of uh, collective Enneagram? Do you, if you know what I mean? One message that I would have for the peoples is. Um, just that the the friendliness and niceness, let's say, of the other types besides four, because fours are not those things, um, is is just as neurotic and you know yeah. uh, p- patterned and uh, unconscious as the fours, you know, disdain, hate, disappointment, etc. Right. So there's um, you know, in these discussion groups, there's a lot of conflict about that, that as if when I'm talking about four as having those qualities of disdain, et cetera, they're thinking I'm saying something negative about four. Right. And it's really just another perspective on reality. I would say that four is sort of uh, represents something like if we're talking in a in a cosmic or a general or archetypal way, four represents something irreconcilable with the whole. Like that, reality always has like a flaw in it. It always has like an mm-hmm. something yeah. that can't be uh, totalized or redeemed within the whole. And like that's the, like the flaw is part of the whole in its own way. You know, yeah. There's something uh, always that is out of reach that is mysterious you know there's always something a little bit like any complete thing is also a little bit broken 
And it's mm-hmm. that broken part, that decay, that running down or that entropy in, in, in contrast to some other kind of ascendant or um, unifying force. And often what I see, especially like with people with a religious background, there's this sense that everything needs to be redeemed and everything needs to be turned in or, or turned to whole or unified. And I think that there's a certain uh, place that the force space speaks to of letting things being broken and letting things being unreconciled and complicated and dirty or flawed or broken or whatever the word is, but that sense that there is a there is a, a an empty space or a, a gap or a void or a negative thing in the whole, and it's not it's not a challenge or problem for the whole. It's just another perspective or lens that reality comes through. Four also represents kind of what comes from what you're saying, John. The problem that forces change, right? Because wholeness is kind of you can get stuck in a circle, right? In a mm. circle of wholeness, or right. stuck in an equilateral triangle, right? So the crack, you know, is something that forces the the, the repetitive pattern to, you know, right. recreate, turn into something new. And it's probably and it, and it's so four kind of represents a dissatisfaction that's necessary. Yeah, and like, you know, this COVID thing, like there's, oh, it's bringing people together and maybe waking people no, up. And it's not. You know, <laughs> maybe, or maybe it's going to lead us to fascism and insanity yeah. and massive death. But whatever it is, it's just a part of the fabric. Like the virus itself doesn't have to have a good function to be a part of yep. reality. Exactly. That's what it is. Yep. It's It's people constantly being like, look, like, there's a choir and they're all singing together on video. And it's just like, listen, that's shit. Like they're singing together. They're not in sync. Like it's bullshit. Like, you know, the whole point purpose of a choir is like the energy of them physically being together. This isn't a choir. This is just us like pretending that we're okay. And we're not. And yeah, like, like a choir is a bunch of bodies together, but also that exactly. there are fucking bodies being loaded up into f- like semi truck freezing mm-hmm. trucks that are the overflow because the morgues can't yeah. hold you know it's like yes exactly that that's just the way it is like it's not necessarily it doesn't need to be a um striving for the good constantly you know and we don't need to acknowledge everything as some kind of learning opportunity or some kind of progressive thing and i think david one of the early books i think that you sent me was dream in the underworld by uh, james hellman is that correct Mm -hmm. yep i mean that that book was like so like speak spoke so deeply to me because you know, it's about, um, you know, it's talking about dreams, but it's talking about like, like when you have a dream of something like death or decay, it's not, it's a, it's a metaphor for a kind of, um, force that acts against the ego's need to appropriate everything for an egoic progressive kind of agenda where things are getting better or moving towards something. It's sort of this, like, uh, it's a solvent for the ego's, uh, rigid solar energy and uh sometimes what the four thing is is not like somebody today online was like oh fours do inspiring art and it's like definitely not it's to keep it's the it's you know a lot of the four thing is to put the shadow out there and give it a, yeah. give it airtime yeah because yeah. what you have otherwise, like, you know, our, our capitalist fucking, you know, just medical system of one of these many systems that's failing right now, it's just like, we're going to keep making a profit and keep going. And yeah, there's a lot of suck, sick shit happening with it. But, you know, we're the best healthcare system in the world. We got to keep going and, you know, money, money, money. And then it all breaks and it's <laughs> rot and disgust and decay and terror, you know? Yeah, yeah I mean, I've, I, I remember someone asking me about what I felt about this whole thing and I've tried not to talk about it publicly because there's a part of me that um even though people are going to die and there's a lot of suffering right now and people are anxious there's a part of me that's happy that things are breaking down because Mm -hmm. a lot of bullshit is being stripped away and everyone realizes how fucked up everything is the entropy is actually enjoyable isn't it yeah like I really a little bit I mean, I don't it's, enjoy it's like being knowledge for once. Like we all know it was there. Now people can't stop and can't hide from it. Right. Exactly. Right. It was there the whole time we knew, but yeah. 
Yeah, I, I really enjoy that because before, if you point out how corrupt and rotten things are, everyone's saying, you know, why are you being so fucking negative? And now it's all fucking negative. Like you can't fucking turn away from it. People are dying every day. Our healthcare system is fucking bogus. Our politicians are corrupt. They don't give a fuck about us. Uh, we're ruled by corporate overlords. Like we we can't even get you know basic benefits uh, as a result of what's going. I mean, you can't trust anything. So everything right. that people put their trust in has fallen apart. Mm-hmm. And you know those people who were pointing out these problems, like Bernie Sanders, don't seem like you know doomsday <laughs> whatevers anymore. They they seem yeah. pretty rational at this point. So that part of me feels uh, in a in a way vindicated that I don't not vindicated, but just more like oh you know finally people can see the shadow yeah. <laughs> reality. And yeah, 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 no. and it and it's like as as this gets the you know the death toll and the suffering and the breakdown keeps happening. Uh, like part I think a, a lot of times why people struggle is that they're they're encouraged to find the healing message in their grief prematurely. Mm-hmm. Yes. And it's like, mm. just grieve, That's you true. know, just it's like just grieve. Be in it. Be in no. it. No. I think that's uh, what fours bring to the world for me is the ability to, to be validated in my grief and sadness and mm-hmm. anxiety, because you guys kind of get that, like good things happen or bad things happen to good people and the world is shit. And eventually we're all going to die. <laughs> so like you guys just kind of get that dark side. And I feel like a lot of times if I try to, if I try to present that to other people, they try to put a light spin on it. Like, Oh, well, if you're a good person and life will work out for you. And it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. I, um, I was just saying this for, for all the listeners, but uh, a woman reached out to me uh, a while ago and said that she was sure that her son was a four with a five wing. And, you know, when most people say the four with a fours or whatever, I'm like, OK, maybe. But uh, she was like, can you can you coach him? Because I know that you're four with a five and I, I feel like he needs a similar perspective. And uh, when I first started talking to him, it was very clear that he actually was a four with a five. And he just talked about how fucking awful things were, how awful life was. He's 18, you know, and just it was and and, it, and instead of telling him well well blah, blah, it gets better blah 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 i just i was like you're you're totally right and he relaxed so much mm. and he, he just felt like mm-hmm. like just from that simple thing of just validating his feeling and i remember growing up like uh i had a very privileged good upbringing but like i felt so incongruent that when i try to share how i felt i was right. either seen as selfish or yeah. or uh, or often mentally ill and I got medication for it and all this kind of stuff. And so, you know, being able to just have that certain aspect of life genuinely acknowledged, no matter if you're a four, whatever type you are, I think is is really important and to be able to hold space for it in yourself, no matter what your type is, yep. is really essential for being fucking sane. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I sometimes end up feeling um, that this sort of positivity need to make things positive need to make things useful for growth and that sort of a thing it really keeps people unprepared for crisis like this yeah when yeah. when shit like th- like when shit like this happens or when when people lose their loved ones or sudden death happens because that they haven't sat with grief and loss before or come to grips with that um people don't know how to cope with that shit and so i i feel like that's what fours bring to the table or and you know people who have four fixes to to a certain degree is just a comfort comfort level with um the the perspective that it's it is empty and there is grief and loss in the world and we don't need to shoe shine it and make it better like that's just part of it and that um it almost makes you ready for crisis because when it happens it's like almost a confirmation of what you you knew was always there <laughs> yeah it needs to just give be able to hang in the air sometimes instead of getting resolved or fixed or patched up you know it just needs to like run its course <laughs> on that light note thanks for uh being here laurie and joseph I hate all you guys i hate you too <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> much hate <laughs>